Furman upset Virginia, then hours later, 15 seed Princeton shocked Arizona. So a 13-1, a 15-1, could today be the day of the 14 seed? More specifically, the Montana State Bobcats. MTN's Ashley Washburn is in Greensboro, North Carolina, ahead of tonight's game with the Confident Cats head coach. The stage is set for the first round of March Madness inside a quiet Greensboro Coliseum, but as we reach the 24-hour mark from tip-off, the magic of March is definitely in the air. Montana State men's basketball was the last team to hit the floor on Thursday for a 40-minute shoot-around that was open to the public as they get ready for their game against Kansas State. And the biggest takeaway I saw from it was the level of confidence that they had on the court compared to last year's tournament. Obviously, a big piece of that is a healthy roster from top to bottom, which is a stark difference from when they played Texas Tech but the other part of that is the momentum that they're riding in on of what many people are considering the golden age of Bobcat basketball. I sat down with head coach Danny Sprinkle earlier this week to talk about his success as the head coach of this program for the last four years and why he doesn't even consider it the golden age just yet. Patterson throws ahead. Raekwon makes the catch and that will do it. Raekwon battle will let it roll out. Put a stamp on it. You are witnessing the golden age of Bobcat basketball. Every head coach has expectations of what they want their program to look like. Would you have ever imagined that this program would be able to accomplish what it has in these last four seasons? Not this quickly. You know, I'd be lying if I told you I'd say we'd be back to back. I knew we'd be good. I knew how special Bozeman was. It was just about getting the right kids here, you know, because once you get a taste of it, all you want to do is get back. And, uh, you know, my staff has been unbelievable. Back-to-back -back trips to the NCAA tournament. When you think about those fans that watched you as a player, now here you are as a coach, what has it been like coaching for your alma mater? It's been a lot of pressure, but I think it's probably more that I just put on myself. Like, before every decision or before every game, like, I'm thinking of the fans. I'm thinking of the former players, and, you know, I don't want to let them down. It's still, like, numbing, you know, when I'm even coaching sometimes, even now, four years later, like, I'll look across the court sometimes at the end of the game and you still see so many fans that were there cheering me on, you know, and they're just diehards and, like, that means something to me. What is that recruiting process like or the philosophy to get to this point? In order to have tradition like we have, I want them to know who the great players were in Bobcat basketball. I want them to know who the great teams were, the championship teams. And that way they know when they put on that jersey who they're representing. You know, they're representing guys from 85, you know, from the 70s, from the 96 team, the 2002. And when you have high character guys, it's easy to get them to play together because all they want to do is win. There's always some sort of Cinderella team yep. in this tournament, and you had said, why not us? Why not? If somebody had to ask you, how would you define Montana State basketball and what Montana State basketball stands for, how would you put that into words? Discipline, tough and gritty. For us to go, I think it was 18 and three in league games, and then last year, 19 and four in league, that's hard. You know, you have to be tough and you have to be able to, you know, find different ways to win, and that's what this program's done. People are calling this the golden age of Bobcat basketball. Would you hear those words? What does that mean to you? It'll be the golden age if we win on Friday. You know, I told the guys, like, pack for five days. You know, I'm not planning on coming home Saturday. I'm not planning on it. So bring two uniforms, bring tons of gear and all that because I want to come home on Monday. And after talking to Danny earlier this week, I also packed for five days as well. So we'll see how it all culminates for the Bobcats Friday night as they take on Kansas State at 740 Mountain Time on CBS. Reporting in Greensboro, North Carolina, Ashley Washburn, MTN Sports. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. May the luck of the Irish be with you and yours. For some of us, the final weekend of winter looking absolutely wonderful. We'll take a look at our forecast here in just a second. But first, what's going on across the U.S.? Your weather headlines, southeast, eastern Gulf Coast. Heavy rain, possibly severe storms through tonight. Could even see some tornado activity down there along the Gulf Coast. Upper Midwest at Great Lakes, snow departing today. Plains in eastern U.S. below to much below normal temperatures this weekend. For us, high pressure coming on in, trying to keep things nice and dry as we wrap up the final weekend of winter. But as we get into next week, do we have another shot of winter heading our way out of the west? I'll let you know with a full forecast coming up in just a bit. Happening in the Montana legislature, Republicans are proposing several new amendments to the Montana Constitution this session. 
The party earned the power to put constitutional changes in front of voters when they gained their current 102 seat supermajority. Leaders say a dozen amendment proposals will get serious consideration, everything from the expansion of the right to bear arms to Supreme Court elections. This week, protesters swarmed the Capitol, arguing lawmakers are going too far. Constitutional amendment proposals have a later transmittal deadline than general bills. They will need to move forward by the start of April. In Billings, an unusual problem is plaguing a local neighborhood. It could be happening elsewhere too. Dozens upon dozens of dead birds littering residents' backyards. New this morning, Q2's Haley Monaco investigates what's happening and finds some answers. Now I know these black spots behind me here that you can see may look like leaves, but they're actually rows of dead birds. Over a hundred of them have been found on just this property alone. You can see them just about everywhere you look, dozens upon dozens of dead starlings spread out across the neighborhood. You just look in front yards, you can see them under trees all over. Josh Digley lives on the Billing South Side and says it's the sheer number of dead birds that had him doing a double take. In the last five days, 27. Uh, it started Sunday night, I noticed there was quite a few that landed in the yard and some of them just never got up and left. But yeah, there's one right over here that's dead. Digley found four in just the short amount of time MTN was with him Thursday. And in his neighbor's yard across the street, they said over 100 dead birds have been found. It, it just seems so weird, the amount out of nowhere. So MTN started to investigate. It turns out the U.S. Department of Agriculture is responsible for the hundreds of dead starlings. The agency tells us they're using a chemical bait called DRC-1339 to reduce the number of birds in the area saying in part, the large number of roosting starlings increases the potential of passing disease to livestock. DRC 1339 works very quickly, however, dead birds may be found days afterwards. In this instance, local governments were notified of this abatement project and the potential that dead birds may be seen. The USDA also says the dead birds do not pose a threat to humans or pets. For nobody to say anything about it, I think that's what's really weird. Digley says finding the birds has been a weird occurrence and he has been taking photos of each one he finds. They're usually peaceful. Some of them just land. They're standing on their feet. Um, I even have some pictures of some that their beaks aren't even down. They're just standing dead. The USDA would not tell us where the chemical salt is being fed to the starlings, but the EPA says the risk to humans and pets is minimal. But residents like Digley are skeptical. If it drops a bird out of the air and kills it, if your cat eats it, your cat's probably going to be at risk. Your dog's probably at risk. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. For the next nine weeks, anglers will be sprawled across Flathead Lake as Spring Mac Days officially starts Thursday. The fishing event put on by the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes gives away cash prizes for catching lake trout in an effort to reduce non-native fish. MTN's Sean Wells tells us more about this conservation effort that attracts anglers from all across Montana and beyond. It will be busy out here on Flathead Lake for the next nine weeks as Mac Day's spring event is officially underway. It's getting to where we're seeing people fishing as adults that were little kids when we first started, but that's pretty cool. Mac Days on Flathead Lake has grown exponentially since its inception in 2002. We had 888 fish turned in. Today we get more than that in single days. So it has really grown. Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes fisheries specialist Cindy Benson says invasive lake trout were introduced into Flathead Lake in the 1900s. The lake trout prey on native fish such as the bull and West Slope cutthroat trout, decimating their populations over the years. As this reduction program proceeds, what we're hoping to see is an increase in the populations of the native fish. That's where Mac Days comes into play. Twice a year, the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes put on the fishing event, giving away cash prizes, encouraging anglers to help them manage the lake trout population. The Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes know that it's expensive to go out here and fish and do this. They appreciate the help. They know that anglers are a big part of this reduction program. The Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes provide cash prizes for the event. This year's purse totals $225,000 in a variety of categories. Two youth categories, ladies category. We have an over 70 category. 
those guys are all saying we need over 80 now. <laughs> the event attracts anglers to northwest Montana and keeps them coming back. People come from several different states and fish in this event. People are planning their vacations around the events. You know, they're they're asking a year ahead of time what's the dates for next year. Cindy hopes this spring's Mac Days brings in up to 30,000 lake trout, helping protect native fish populations in Flathead Lake for generations to come. This is a beautiful spot. It's um, some place, you know, that we need to take care of. We need to treasure it. And I believe that in doing this conservation effort to help our native fish, it'll make it a better place to be. There are five different spots around Flathead Lake to record your catch. For that information, head over to our website at kpax.com. In Blue Bay, Sean Wells, MTN News.